Okay, I'm just doing an update to the uh, proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Um, I'm doing that because um, a lot of students have had confusion and there's not a lot of explanation uh, on why it works. I'm also doing it because uh, every time you are asked to memorize something, I'm a little bit uh, uneasy about that because number one, when you get to the exam, you might forget it. And number two, you don't really understand it. So I'm just adding an extra bit of info here. Um, and it comes around uh, doing science properly by being able to predict uh, something. So if, if you get into an exam and they just say, um, you know, look up these values in a data booklet uh, and then work out where they are, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, often they come up with a completely new chemical. Uh, I've seen, they've, you know, they've gone to a journal where there's been a new chemical discovered the previous year and they threw that in there. Um, just making sure no one ever has seen the exam questions before and you've got to be able to predict where things go. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to advance on this in, in a second video. I'm just going to follow on from this for the high levels. But for the standard levels, um, it's important to know how the system works because um, in the paper last year of releasing this, they, there are lots of questions about how the different spectroscopy uh, graphs come about like what sort of radiation goes in what goes out and if you don't get that understanding you're going to be caught out uh, so if you want that seven you need to have a deeper understanding and try and stay away from memorization okay just a little secret when I was at high school I didn't even know S, uh, I didn't even memorize SO4 2 minus I worked it out from first principles by doing the Lewis structure I don't advise that um, but you'd be quite capable of getting an IB7 without learning the polyatomic ions. You know, if you have a deep understanding of everything, you'll still get your 7. Um, so the first thing is, this is, um, I'm going to put a link in the description. The important thing to know is this is increasing radio, uh, radio frequencies. So what's actually happening is these protons are under the influence of a magnetic field and there's a radio frequency that they're getting zapped with and at some point they'll start spinning around resonating now if the magnetic field um, isn't just right uh, if it's too strong uh, it'll take more of that and it'll shift it it'll shift it down field it'll be a downshift from TMS so why is this not why is this parts per million which is a concentration uh, as I say, I'll put a link in the description. This is a calculation. It's a comparison uh, to a standard. Um, so that there would be it'd, be, it'd make a lot more sense if they used strength of radio frequency there. And it'd make a lot more sense to in, because I couldn't find this understanding from any of the YouTube videos or even online. I think the Pearson, now the plus to Pearson actually mentions um, the de-shielding uh, to do with um, to do with the different uh, protons going up and down, um, but no one actually talk, talks about de-shielding from what? Uh, it's de-shielding from the external magnetic field, um, and so if this proton um, is not shielded from the magnetic field, it's more exposed. It's going to be held in place. I'll just put a hand in there it's held in place by the magnetic field and it's going to take a lot more force to be able to start flipping it so that is a downshift in the TMS it's taking more energy on the other hand if it's shielded a lot and the shielding can occur uh, from all you care about uh, here is the number of H pluses uh, this will be increased shielding so there's more protons surrounding it, that's stopping the magnetic field having an influence. Um, and also, if this, e, this is an electronegative element and it's pulling all the electrons away, uh, that's also going to have a de-shielding. Uh, so decreased shielding, I'm going to say, is uh, electronegative atom nearby. So you can see that, uh, just compare these two, um, you can see that these two are very similar, but this one has less H pluses, uh, these ones here, surrounding it, and they also have this electronegative element 
uh, pulling uh, electrons away. So this one here has the most shielding, so it is closer to the TM. Uh, this one here is all on its own, exposed, and that's quite a strong pull of electrons away from it as well. So that, that's why that one has a stronger pull from the external magnetic field. And so it is deshielded the most from the external magnetic field. So the RF is greater. Uh, and so that explains why those three are in those three positions. Now, fair enough, you could go to the, your um, data book and look up those values and then say, oh, it must be that because of that, that, that. But what happens if you get um, something you've never seen before and you don't actually understand, well, why the heck is that one there? And why is that one there? And why is that one there? Um, and so that's all to do with shielding and deshielding of the external magnetic field, meaning that you need a stronger uh, radio frequency. And uh, the shielding and deshielding is to do with uh, surrounding the proton with stuff, uh, you know, uh, other protons, other electrons that are sort of going to interfere with that external magnetic field and stop that magnetic field having an influence. Okay, um, so I will encourage you, even though you're standard level, please read. Uh, it's worth looking at the high level one as well uh, to show you how, um, to show you why. Uh, a little bit more on how the shield, de shielding works. That's up to you.